G'day and welcome back to my hobby room. Now, I've made a number of videos on how to take very easy and quick photographs of your models so they look, you know, pretty impressive. At least good enough for social media, all right? And my methods are usually simple and easy, like this one here, right? This ship. That's all I'm doing. Okay, that's all I'm doing. I've, it's my method of two pieces of computer paper, couple of kit boxes, and I've got a light here, right, and a light there. Easy as that. And the one behind, I use a backlight as well. So there's a there's a lamp up here, which I use as a backlight, but it's optional. And with that, you can shoot most things. You can just about get all of this ship in it. I mean, it's probably not the best subject, but I'm mainly going to be shooting ships in this video because the question arises, Harry... What happens when I've got a really big ship? You know, what happens when my ship is half a metre long or so? It's not going to fit on a piece of computer paper. So, yeah, in answer to that, I'm going to show you how to shoot really big stuff, right? Big stuff up to about, well, at least 600 mil long, maybe longer. And you can still get them all in focus. You can still get them all illuminated. You can do it on your hobby desk. You can use the lamps you've got. In fact, it's going to cost you nothing more than what you've got in the hobby room except for maybe one thing. Not going to cost you much. I'll explain that in a sec. So, are you interested in seeing how I shoot big ships? Oh, God, pull your teeth in, Harry, Denny. Goodness me, that's hard to say. All right, <laughs> let's get on with it. Roll the music. <laughs> So this is my setup when I want to take photos of something not too big, not longer than say 20 centimeters, because this is A4 computer paper. So it's roughly about 30 centimeters by about 20 centimeters. Okay. So if I turn this sideways, this ship, we could get a photo of the hull in there. Okay. That would just work. So we, we might just be able to do it, but we're not going to get the bowsprit and everything else. Here's some photos of things that I've taken in the previous videos. All right. Now, if you want to go back and watch those first before this one, I might give you some more information because I talk about things about reflecting light because the LEDs I'm using are nice and soft. OK, they produce a reasonably soft light. If you're using just a, a lamp that's got an incandescent bulb in it or something, it's fairly harsh. And there's a way to fix that just by using kit boxes to bounce the light. I explain all that in part one. In part two, I talk about staging, which is this, about how to set things up to get an infinite background. Because the trick here is the first paper paper, instead of ending up hard against the other one, and then you get a horrible edge, it falls down behind. See the little pegs holding it? So this is my method of taking photographs of anything that's kind of little. But the question is, and it's been asked a number of times, how do I shoot a big ship, Harry? You know, how do I shoot something that's long? How do I shoot something that's really tall? Okay going to have to spend a little bit of money, but not much. Half a shekel. That's all it can take. Or you might even have this lying around. Everything else I'm going to use will be in your hobby room. So let me set up and I'll show you what we need to do to shoot something bigger. Welcome back. Now, yeah, I know this one's looking a bit tatty. This is the ship that fell off. I don't just finish making it. It was really nice. And then I um, put it in the cabinet uh, but I hadn't glued the hull or the pedestals to it. And it was a windy day. The fan was on. I opened the cabinet just as the fan was coming around and just as a gust of wind came in and this thing took off into the air, came into its pieces and crunch. And I snapped the bowsprit and none of the rigging broke. The rat lines got bent. They're photo wet rat lines. Yeah. So don't judge me on this ship. It's It looked much better. Here, here's a photo of how it looked before I wrecked it. Okay. So now I have got the full length of the ship in there. Okay, so um, how do we do that? Well, let's have a look. Same sort of trick, but I have a much bigger piece of paper. I've gone from an A4, right, 300 by 200, right up to an A1, which I think is something like, I don't know, 900 by 600. Okay, it is quite big. And that's going to allow me to shoot things up to about seven, 800 millimeters long. Okay. If you're imperial and you need to work that in inches, just take your shoes and socks off. You can work it out on your toes. Okay. Now, lights are identical to what I had before. Okay. So there's an LED here. They're nice soft lights. They don't burn anything. Okay. If you can put your hand on it, not getting burnt, it's not going to wreck the model. Because I had a comment saying, oh, no, I don't want to melt my model. Well, this isn't going to melt your model. Tell you what does melt your model is 
the cabinet that I had this in was getting a little bit of sunlight, not direct, indirect, bouncing off some, um, some basically some slats and things and a, and a blind outside. And so I was getting dappled light on it. And after a couple of years in the um, cabinet, the um, easy line has all disappeared. It's white now. And if you touch it, it goes, Phew. yeah, Thanos effect. Phew. And it destroys. So what I've got here is my overhead lamp is just, that's a nine watt LED bulb into an Ikea bendy army thing. Okay. So it's pretty handy for me to just, I can, you know, set my levels of light. Because light works this way. Every time you double the distance, it's a bit further away, right? You you go twice as far as way, you get one quarter the light. You come, you come in half the distance, you get four times the light. So subtle movements in your lamps can change very quickly how bright something is. Okay, because it's an inverse square law. I'll, um, I won't try and explain it too much. I tried to in one of the other videos, I think I confused everyone. Just remember, it is double the double, okay? So if you are three times away, it's actually going to be nine as a square. It'll be nine times as dark. So that's it. It drops off really quickly as your lamps move away. But anyhow, you always want to adjust your lamps and get the right luminance. Now, my rule to start off with, because the thing is, you go, okay, that's all well and good, Harry, but where do I know first to put my lamps? Now, I've said this in other videos, I do it in this one. Use the rule of 45s. From your model, 45 degrees out, okay, you put a lamp. From your model, 45 degrees out this way, you put a lamp. And you know what 45 is? Okay, there's 90 degrees, all right? It's the one in the middle, split of 90. I'm sure everyone knows what 45 is, but I always have to qualify these things just in case. I just assume everyone's done trigonometry. So... 45 degrees this way, 45 degrees this way, you put a lamp. And then that lamp tilts down at 45 degrees. So you take from the bottom of your model up 45 degrees. That's where your lamp should be. Um, and that's where you start. Everything's 45. Even the backlight, if you can, at 45. Although I'm using a bounce trick here. Remember I talked about reflection? Well, because this lamp is so powerful, one, I've got some tissue paper on it to try and drop down its brightness. You can do that with a piece of computer paper as well. Just put it on there. Uh, this one gets a little bit warm, but I think it's more the sort of the casing, the metal in it. But it never gets hot enough that I can't put my hand there. So I'm never worried about it burning my models. But again, what I do here is, ideally it should be 45 back, right? But I can't do that with the physical shape of my desk and what's going on. So I actually point it 45, instead of coming this way 45 degrees, right? I point my lamp 45 degrees that way because then it will bounce off and bounce back onto the model. It's a bounce trick, okay? If you can't figure that out, just know that what you're trying to do is work in 45. So my top lamp, 45 degrees back onto the um, paper, because that will give me a nice even background. 45 degrees here to the model, both vertically and horizontally, and you have got your basic lighting set up. That'll probably work most times, because what you do is shoot wide. You notice this is the width of my shot, okay? Although you're probably shooting in four by three, this is 16 by nine. Don't worry about the aspect. See how I'm wide? That's what you want to do. Right, let's work with something a little bit bigger, shall we? Now, depth of field. The best way for me to show you what goes on here is I'll bring in the iPad and so that I can show you on it, okay? So iPad in photo mode. Okay, so, you know, it'll take a photo, no problem. Now, if I do this is what most people do, they get down in the corner, all right, and they take a photo really close. Okay. So I've taken that photo, and there it is. Now, I hope you can see this clearly. The camera will autofocus on what it sees as most important, what's closest to it, or often what's brightest, is what people don't realize. Sometimes you've got this great thing and there's something bright in the background, it'll autofocus on the thing that's bright in the background. Here I have deliberately autofocused on the bow, okay? But you probably would, you'd probably tap here and go, yeah, it's in focus. But if you have a look here at the stern, that's all soft as anything, absolutely pixelated and looks terrible, okay? Whereas my bow here, lovely and clear. And this is what happens, it's called depth of field, okay? So here there is no depth of field. I've got focus here, but over there I haven't got focus. So there's no depth of field. My depth of field is only probably that section. 
So how do you get more depth of field? Well, you do that by going wide. I'll just take this photo very wide here. Okay, so what I've done is, instead of being so close, I'm much further away. And by being much further away, I just focused on the midpoint. This will give me a broader, basically, depth of focus because the further you are away, the more things crunch down, okay? And therefore, your depth of focus, your field, instead of when you're up close, it's only that long, your depth of field ends up being much longer, right, or much deeper. This is the trick. So you do that. Now you say, well, that's crappy because it's six miles away and you can't really, it looks like really rubbish, Harry. Yeah, okay. So what you would do then, all of these devices have these cropping tools, okay? Although I haven't really taken a very good photo because I haven't allowed for the fact that it's... um. There we go. So, done. Now, the stern is in focus. The bow is in focus. The midships are in focus. It's all in focus. So we're going to do the same trick here at the diagonal, okay? Because we want that, we want to live. Now, most people would put their model way over here and think they're going to shoot it, okay? You don't need to. You come right up to the edge, okay? Or pretty close to it. Because you never need much lead, okay? You just don't need it. You, you have to take my word for this. You won't know until you actually take the photo. But having that edge there, I'll just take this shot so you can see I'm not lying. All right. So there's your photo. You don't need much. You don't need a great big huge amount in the bottom here. Okay, you're looking at the overall thing. Unless you do need a bit more, okay, but come as close as you can to the edge instead of being all the way at the back. That's the biggest fault that most people do is they, they push the bloody model all the way to the back, you know, way over here, and then you're just throwing shadows on the back and it never looks as good. It doesn't work, okay? You need to be right up here. You need to be as close to there as possible. The other thing you can do, you may want to create more of the background. Now to get more space at the front, say that you do need that, right? Normally you don't with most things, you actually, you need very minimal, you bring the model right up. But say that you do, and in this case, because this is long and thin, I might need a bit of space. I don't want to push back into there because that creates shadows and all kinds of problems that never works as well. So what I need to do is I push my kit box back and then I can drop down my piece of paper. And I'll just use my water lamps here, but also I need a little bit of help from a couple of weights. And now I've got what's called an S board. Okay, you can't quite see it. It's literally going up, flat, and up. Okay, it's like a little S. Okay, so S shaped thing. If you used a couple of kit boxes to raise this up, then you're going to get more roll off, and it probably would be better. And that's how I did these photos. Okay, with these photos, I actually used a riser that you use for a monitor, one of those computer monitor risers, and it's about that high. So it's twice the size of the kit box, and that's kind of handy. I just slide it in there, drop this edge off, put a couple of weights on, and I've got this whole infant area. But I can still move my model pretty close to the end. Okay. And that is how you get the S thing to happen. Believe me, it works. So now if we zoom in, and we'll just have to push it into frame. A bit more, Harry. Okay. And now we need to adjust the lights again because rule of 45s. At the moment, I'm lighting the background. This is another error a lot of people make. They light the piece of paper. They don't like the model, right? Like the subject, don't like the background. So 45 from there means I bring my lamp to there. 45 from here means I need to bring this lamp over like that, okay? And instantly, there's lots more light. Middle east, you don't want your lamp in the frame. So there's lots more light. And also, I might want to adjust my backlight, okay? Now, the other trick you can do at this point is I'm tapping in the middle of the screen, right, again, to get my depth of focus depth of field, sorry, and then I'm going to iris up, okay? Too much, too little, you go to the background kind of just burns out, but you don't burn out the model. Somewhere there. All right, so if I took the happy snap there, probably exaggerated a bit for the video, but that would give me the model sitting in an infinite background, 
and it should be in focus from there to there. Because remember, we are still shooting wide, although that was zoomed in, which I'd probably take that shot, okay? Because remember, zoom-ins on digital cameras, all I do is enlarge the dots. You get no more information. So it doesn't matter whether you shoot it wide or you shoot it tight. If you've zoomed in, you don't get any more. On a analog camera, like the old cameras, when you're zooming in, you do because all you're doing is changing the size of what it's going through to the film. The film dots remain the same. The emulsion on the film and all the dots remain exactly the same. But it's different with digital cameras. Most of the time, it's a digital zoom. Sometimes they've got optics. A good quality one will have optics in the um, in the lens. You can zoom, but you can bet your bottom dollar the one you got on your phone, right? That is, it's all digital zooming. And they're pretty good, though, because they are shooting quite high. Now, this is the thing I want to talk about, and we're talking about the dots, okay? Now, when you take a photo for a magazine, that's print, and print is reflected light. So you're going to need to shoot the photo pretty well, say, 4K levels, imagine, okay? So we'll call that 4,000 by 3,000, roughly, okay? Which is 12 million dots, hence 12 megapixel. Got it? Okay. So that's the thing. Back when we were only shooting TV cameras, they had 1 megapixel. And this is what people don't realize. A TV screen, say, your standard TV screen, even 24-inch, not too big, okay? Back in the old days, it's standard definition, it was one megapixel picture. But because it is TV, it is light coming back into your eyes. It is projection. You don't need as many dots for it to look as good. This is a trick of the eye. When it's printed on a piece of paper, you've got to have light hit the paper and that bounce back into your eye. That is called basically reflection. All right. Projection, reflection, two totally different things. We used to have this problem in TV that, you know, we'd have this great shot in a TV commercial with a shot back in standard definition, which is basically 560i, right? You know about the things as 720i and 1080i and all that. Okay, so we're talking 560i, okay? Not a lot of lines. In fact, in America was 480i, 480, 480 lines, okay? Not a lot. But you've got a great picture on your TV screen. And you know, and you could have it 24 inch screen, it's two foot wide, should look great. People would say to me, can we have that? We want to put it in a poster. And we'd say, it's not going to work. They wouldn't believe us because at print size, say 300 dpi, that equates to the size of a credit card. And this is the difference. So a lot of people, you know, think you, you need tons of lights and you need great big cameras and big expensive setups to photograph your models. If you're doing magazine, yeah, maybe. Okay. But even then I dispute it. But for magazine shots, yeah, because you're going to have to have a super high definition. You're going to have a 4K picture. But when you're shooting with your little smartphone, you're probably getting an HD picture, okay? So it's better than my old TV standard definition of, you know, 480 or, well, or 560 lines. You would be getting 720 or 180 lines. So it's quite good. It's quite good. It's not 4K, but it doesn't matter. Now, when you see the picture on Facebook or anywhere, right, whatever social media is your poison, your screen, maybe your monitor is 1920 by 1080. That's common, right? So your picture is going to be at most half the height of the monitor, 500. So you're only going to get 500 lines. So if you shoot at HD, right, 1080 lines, half of those lines have disappeared by the time it turns up on social media. Now, I hope I haven't confused you with this. The simple thing is social media, computer screens, TVs, small amount of dots, but because they're projecting your eye, it looks great. Print, lots of dots because it's reflected light. So something that's one size on print will look fantastic on TV, doesn't work the other way around. Something on your computer screen or on TV and you go to print it, you often, if you ever try to do this, you go, oh, it doesn't look as sharp. It looks very soft, it looks a bit sort of pixely. That is the problem. All right, let's move on and have a look at something that might be tall. How do we shoot a tall sailing ship? All right. This time, I've turned the paper up portrait. Okay, so the paper is longer that way, and I've used the shorter side. But as I said, I think this is about 600 wide and 900 long. That's given me the extra height I need. I can do shots really down low, shooting up in the rigging. I can do all kinds of things. 
shooting this in landscape in video is not going to quite look but I have some photos here right this is what happens when you get your camera and you shoot in portrait and you get some nice shots so it kind of works so as you can see that works rather well having that extra height and this time I've removed the base we didn't need a lift because our model is already lifted up okay we don't need that we can crop our photo right to the edge of here because that's all we need we're more interested in the ship and its masts and the height so that's what we do now the trick is I'll, I'll zoom in so we can basically get a bit of an idea but we'll be losing a lot of the ship okay so we're zooming in there now focus if we just focused on the background this is a gray piece of card it's not a white piece of card and that's good because we've you know we've got ships that have got white on them and they've got other things i'll show another color in a sec but that's what i've done now focusing i'll pick a midpoint so probably the um the boat and then i'm going to iris up so too much too little somewhere in the middle now I probably could tweak this lighting a bit more because it's always hard to get these four sails looking um, you know, exactly right. You really need something that's, you sort of drop them back a bit, like so, and even it out. But um, that's a matter of playing around. Because you've got lots of surfaces here and they kind of shadow each other out, this is a bit tricky. But if you take your time and adjust your lights, you'll eventually get everything fairly evenly illuminated. It can be done. Yeah, so it's a little more fiddly with the sailing ship because you've got all these surfaces and things shadow on things. Because if I kill that one, you'll see that's what this light is doing. This light's actually not too bright because if I take this light up, I've got three different levels in this. I've got nothing, step one, step two, step three. That's kind of handy for doing this sort of thing. And you can see that on step three, that looks fine there. And so I start adding in this one. And then this one needs to be fairly bright because it... He's actually trying to light into that sail. I've also lowered this light. I'm shooting the hull as well. I want the effect of the hull. But you will get a nice look. And the beauty is, again, my background is way back here. So I've got all of this. That means I'm throwing little shadow. And I've got a nice gradient. And with a bit of luck, by the time I trim this all off, I'll get one of these nice photos like I took before. Although in those, I kind of did a few tricks with the background bit of advanced lighting stuff to get a bit more mood but you can see you'll get a nice photo of your ship now what if we change the color of the background because the only one I couldn't get a white I can only get a gray but I don't mind the gray actually that does that will sort of work what if I changed it and put a yellow background because you know there's lots of yellow on the ship let's see what happens so there's yellow but it's it's not the best sympathetic color to this because of the brown and well, there's yellows basically in the mast and the brown. There's also yellow trim on this. It sort of makes the whole thing kind of insipid. Um, not for this. If you had maybe a sort of a darker hull, maybe. But for a ship, it's not exactly a very nice colour. Right? You might put a tank in yellow. You know, you might even get away with putting an aircraft in yellow. It would look like dawn. It might, you know, reflect nicely. You need to think about the colours. Now, I talk more about colours in uh, part three of this um video series about shooting your uh, models. So have a look there where I go through all the different colours and how they affected a grey battleship because each colour made it look completely different. Let's find a colour that really works with this. Oh yes, there you go. My favourite colour for shooting ships. See how it really lifts the whole thing? The blue behind the sails, they start to really pop out. The colours of the hull, they show up much better. Doesn't matter there's trim, blue trim here, right? That's okay. That still sort of works. So you get a much nicer shot. It'll look really good. Let's sort of zoom in, see if we can get a feel for it. And if you've watched any of my videos on rigging, you'll know I shot all of those with a blue background because you could see the black lines, you could see the, the lighter coloured lines, right? The jute coloured lines. The sails don't burn out too much. It just works. Blue works for ships. So if you've got a sailing ship kit, have a look at blue. Here's some photos that I shot using a slightly modified blue background. That was only, a, I think it was an A2 or an A3. It wasn't as big as this. But what I did was to get a patina on it, because I didn't particularly like the shade of blue it came in, I sprayed a bit of Steiner Res Blue and a few other blues to kind of get that photographic background where it's spotted and speckled and, you know, sort of 
trendy, you know, wanky, wanky, trendy, trendy. But there you go, blue. Blue works for sailing ships. In fact, you'll probably find it'll work really nicely for other things. Here's some photos of my Schnell boat, and I shot that on a blue background as well. So, yeah, use your ships, blue works. Aircraft will look one fine on blue because obviously they fly around. Tanks, not so much, okay? So armor's not going to work in blue. I say armor, you probably look at a, a light, very pale yellow, like the one I just used, or maybe even a pale green. Red is a useless color to shoot on. There's only a few weird things that'll work, maybe some forms of cars. And you know, if you've got a white car, you shoot on a red background. Usually the rule of thumb is, if the subject is light, have a dark background. If the subject is dark, have a light background. If the subject is very colorful, have a plain background. If the subject is dull, have a colorful background. You with me? You always do the opposite. So that's kind of the rule, but it's more complicated than that. Now, you may say, okay, Harry, this is all well and good. What makes you an expert? Well, I am, okay? 40 years of lighting. This is the thing. I have been lighting on the stage for broadcast television, doing products and also sets and shows. I've done live shows, rock shows, ballet, you name it. There's so much stuff that I've done lighting. And plus, I do all my stuff on YouTube and I'm always lighting it as best I can. So I know lots of things. I've done lighting for, for magazines. So that's why I understand what is the difference between a photograph that's going to go in a magazine, how that needs to look, as opposed to a happy snap, which is going to go on social media. As I explained, dots. It's all about dots. You need a freaking lot more dots to go in print than you do just to go on a TV or a LCD screen or, you know, social media. I hope this was helpful for anyone who's trying to light their big ship models or really anything. I was going to put the Thunderbird in, but I think I've kind of established a point. If it's tall, turn your paper up the other way. If it's long this way, go landscape with your paper. And these sheets of paper, I got three of them for $15 Australian, which is only about $10 US or something at the moment. Okay, so those three will last me for my life, my life of shooting, as long as I don't wreck them or bash the cat craps on or something. All right. That's it. I'll try and get a white one and I'm going to try and get a light cream one for other things. But the blue one is all I need for my ships. And this is a nice shade of blue, this one. Uh, this is the first time I've actually used it. So I'm very impressed. Anyhow, if you like what you're seeing on my channel, okay, hit that like button, right? There's a like button down there somewhere. Hit that because that tells the bots that people like my videos and therefore they promote it more. Comment by all means. Tell me a joke, something nice. That'd be really good. And look, you can sub to my channel and then you'll always see my videos. Hit that bell notification, right? If you really want to help me out, there's a new thing called Super Thanks, okay? So you think, gee, that is fantastic, Harry. You have saved me so much mucking around. I would like to reward you. Well, hit Super Thanks. You can throw me a shekel or two, and that really helps me to be able to do these videos, okay? So there you go. All right, well, that's about it. I've waffled on long enough. I hope you enjoyed this, but it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Udini. <laughs>